Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. On today's episode, we are going through the analysis that we just got back from the mega food plot trials that we have going on. As many of you know, we have ag corns, we have Nutri-Crave corn, we're testing three or four wildlife corns, soybeans, sunflowers, cow peas, lab lab, all of this is in this analysis that we're gonna go over today. One very important note to mention before we get started, when we start going through the corn, I want everybody to be full aware that this corn has not put on an ear yet. When I took these samples, the corn was about between my neck and the top of my head tall. So around six feet tall is what the corn was, but no ears at that point. You can see the trial looks absolutely gorgeous. Sunflowers are starting to bloom out here and we have got a beautiful plot for whitetails. This analysis has taught me more in the last 48 hours than I knew food plotting from years and years and years of experience. So I think this is going to be absolutely killer information for food plotters going forward with our food plot choices. My name is Wes, I run the channel DIY Food Plot Pro. I've got a Bachelor of Science in Agronomy. I farm for a living and I've got an 1800 acre whitetail deer hunting outfitter in Western Kentucky where we cannot bait. So we rely heavily on the food plots that I produce on this channel to hold and harvest the mature bucks that we're blessed to hunt here in Western Kentucky. The purpose of this test and this analysis was to determine what whitetails prefer, possibly why they're preferring it, and during what times of the year they're preferring it. So this is the first analysis of the year. This is not the last. We will have many, many more coming, especially as we reach grain fill and physiological maturity on these corn plots, we will have another set of samples sent off. We are having a significant issue right now with the deer eating a lot of our corn and we all wondered why, what's going on, and this analysis is gonna shed a lot of light as to what's going on and what food plots we should be planting in our food plots. Okay, so we know from past research from uh, big universities and things like that, that our crude protein levels generally need to stay between 15 to 16%. That's a minimum. We don't really wanna go significantly lower than that. We also know that our phosphorus needs to run about 0.3 or higher. That's also a minimum. So those two things are very key in uh, this analysis as we start going through. Deer are select feeders. They will choose what they are feeding on to fulfill the nutrient requirements that they are having at that time. So you may see one plot getting hit hard now, you may see another plot get hitting hard later. That's why we're doing this trial in many different stages so that we can follow along as these whitetails have fed in these plots and we can track that with real-time data and be able to figure out why they're keying in on those plots. Some of the things that we really want to key in on this analysis. TDM, total digestible nutrients, that is extremely important. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's all the nutrients that are digestible to that animal that the feed is providing. If you look at the top left, you will see the energy table. You will see DE, that is the amount of energy in a feed that is a animal can absorb, that's digestible energy. ME is metabolizable energy. This is the amount of energy after accounting for fecal, urinary, and gaseous losses. NEL is net energy for lactation, very important for our does that are lactating and providing milk for our fawns. The amount of energy in a feed which is available for milk production. NEM is is net energy for maintenance. That's the measurement and the ability of the feed to meet the energy requirements for maintenance. And NEG is net energy for gain. The ability of the feed to meet the energy requirements for gaining weight. There also is a thing at the top left that's mcal per pounds. That's mega calories per pound of the food or the feed that we are providing. So a mega calorie is 1 million calories. ADF is acid detergent fiber. It is a measure of cellulose and lignin in feed that are relatively digestible. So what we did is we went out and we cut all the corns off right at the ground level. We did the exact same thing with the soybeans, the lab lab, the cow peas, and the sunflowers. We put the entire plant. We did not put just what the whitetails mainly eat, which is on the tips of most of the plants. We put the entire plant in that package that we sent off to get the analysis done. Okay, let's see how these plants stack up against one another. Our ag corn had crude protein of 15.9, a TDN, total digestible nutrients, of 62. ADF is 35.9. Remember, we want that number to be lower. 
calcium rate of 0 0.50, phosphorus is 0.36, and 1.28 megacalories per pound of ag corn. DIY 6539, crude protein 17.2%, total digestible nutrients 61. ADF 35.9, calcium 0.51, phosphorus 0.32, 1.26 megacalories per pound of DIY 6539. NutraCrave, crude protein 15.9, TDN 60, ADF 34.9, calcium 0 0.33, phosphorus 0.34, and 1.23 megacalories per pound of NutraCrave. DIY tillering corn, crude protein 16.4, TDN 60, ADF 37.1, calcium 0.43, phosphorus 0.38, 1.25 megacalories per pound of tillering corn. Last one, non-tillering corn, crude protein 16.8, TDN 61, ADF 38.1, calcium 0.49, phosphorus 0.33, and 1.25 megacalories per pound of tillering corn. Before I go over and explain all the explanations behind all this, I think that is staggering. I don't think there's very many folks that realize that corn was running between 15 to 17 percent crude protein this time of the year and traditionally meeting all of the phosphorus requirements for a whitetail as well. That is absolutely shocking. We think of soybeans, cowpeas, lab lab, sunflowers, alfalfa, clover. We think of all those as high protein plots and we really leave corn out and think that it's not high protein. And while it's maybe not compared to some of the other legumes, it's still meeting the minimum threshold that whitetails need. And maybe that's why they're eating so much of it. Okay, let's get to the actual results when we compare all these together. The highest protein in the corn was DIY 6539 at 17.2. The second was DIY non-tillering corn at 16.8. The third was DIY tillering corn at 16.4 and NutraCrave and Ag Corn were both tied for last place at 15.9. The highest total digestible nutrients, TDN. Ag Corn was the winner at 62. DIY 6539 and DIY non-tillering were tied at 61. DIY tillering and NutraCrave were tied uh, for last at 60. The lowest ADF. This is the amount of lignin cellulose that the, the animals really can't digest. So we want this number as low as possible. The lowest ADF is NutraCrave at 34.9. Second place is DIY 6539 and Ag Corn. They were both tied at 35.9. DIY Tillering was at 37.1 and Non-Tillering was at 38.1. The highest calcium was DIY 6539 at 0.51, Ag Corn at 0.5, DIY Non-Tiller at 0.49, and DIY Tillering at 0.43, and NutraCrave at 0.33. The highest phosphorus levels, DIY Tillering at 0.38, Ag Corn at 0.36, NutraCrave at 0.34, DIY Non-Tillering at 0.33, and DIY 6539 at 0.32. The highest mega calories, so the highest amount of calories essentially per pound, ag corn with 1.28 mega calories per pound. DIY 6539 at 1.26 mega calories per pound. DIY tillering and non tillering both tied at 1.25 mega calories per pound and NutraCrave coming in last at 1.23 mega calories per pound. Before we get into the legumes, which are in my opinion, absolutely mind boggling. I can't wait to get into those. Let's talk about the corn for a minute. I was a little bit shocked that ag corn was as good a quality as what it is. And I was honestly a little bit surprised that the varieties that we were planting, all the DIY varieties did as well as they did. I'm not here to badmouth or bash any company, any competitor. That's not my reason for shooting this video. We are simply sharing the results of this analysis with folks. I, I think that's very important to mention. These products will change over time and I expect them to change significantly from now until grain fill. So this is not a clear winner here. 
This is just the analysis of up till this point right now. Let's get into the legumes and the sunflowers. For this experiment, we had cowpeas, soybean, lab lab, and sunflower. These are the four samples that we sent off and these are the analysis that we got back. Cowpea, crude protein, 25.8, ADF, 23.2, total digestible nutrients, 63, calcium, 1.84, phosphorus 0.34 and mega calories per pound of cowpeas in at 1.35 soybeans crude protein 19.5 adf 35.1 tdn 53 calcium 1.35 phosphorus 0.22 mega calories per pound of soybeans 1.11 lab lab crude protein 27.1 ADF 25.5, TDN 64, calcium 0.34, phosphorus 0.51, and mega calories per pound of Lab Lab 1.37. Here's the one that shocked me right here, okay? Sunflowers, crude protein 31.2, ADF 22.3, total digestible nutrients 75, calcium 3.00, phosphorus 0.53 and mega calories per pound of sunflowers 1.62 let's see how they all stack up highest protein sunflowers at 31.2 lab lab is second at 27.1 cowpea at 25.8 takes the third and soybeans at 19.5 takes none the fourth position the lowest adf right that's the cellulose and lignin content we want this number to be as low as we possibly can get it the lowest ADF, sunflowers at 22.3. Cowpeas come in second at 23.2. Lab Lab comes in third at 25.5. And soybeans come in fourth at 35.1. Total digestible nutrients, sunflower at 75. Lab Lab at 64, Cowpea at 63, and Soybeans at 53. Highest Calcium, Sunflowers at 3.00, Cowpeas at 1.84, Soybeans at 1.35, and Lab Lab holding down the end at 0.34. Highest Phosphorus, Sunflowers at 0.53, Lab Lab at 0.51, Cowpeas at 0.34, and Soybeans at 0.22. The highest Mega calories is sunflowers at 1.62 mega calories per pound. Lab Lab in second at 1.37. Cowpeas in third at 1.35. And soybeans in fourth at 1.11. In conclusion of this analysis, I am shocked that soybeans were that low in protein, were that low in total digestible nutrients. Really, the lowest of the majority of the categories was the soybeans. I was also equally shocked to see the sunflowers doing as well as they did in almost, I think they won every single category, which is shocking. We did see, and we have been seeing a lot of pressure on the sunflowers out here from the whitetails, but this really brings home the point that almost all of the corns and all of the legume mix reach above the threshold of minimum protein and minimum phosphorus requirements. There's only a few in there that fell short. The biggest majority of this entire plot is excelling in both of those categories, which is extremely important for whitetail production. As I said earlier, I expect these results to change dramatically as grain fill approaches for the corn, the sunflowers, cowpeas, lab lab, and soybeans. I don't really understand why the soybeans were that low as compared to the, all the rest of them, but I'm just bringing you the results that I got on this trial. And as of what I've seen so far, soybeans are significantly behind the cowpeas, the lab lab, and especially the sunflowers. In my mind, as I take this data in and I try to digest this data in determining what plots to raise for my whitetails in the future, sunflowers 100% need to be a bigger part of our food plot program than what they are right now. Also, a lot of these corns that are feeding whitetails in the summertime. So if you having a lot of issues with whitetails eating your corn before it makes the ear like we do here in Western Kentucky, it would be wise from what I see to pick the highest protein, highest digestible nutrients, corn that we possibly can 
so that when these whitetails eating, they are getting highly nutritious feed. I'm very curious to see how all this translates once the corn matures. But as of right now, this is painting a gigantic picture for me and helping me key in on why these whitetails are hitting what they are hitting. I've not seen a single piece of information as to the clue of why whitetails are hitting corn this time of the year. But it makes a lot of sense now that we have this analysis that it's fairly digestible right in the low to mid 60s. That's right there where, we, where we'd like to see it. It's a lot of calories per pound and it's also running good in protein and phosphorus. I think we've debunked some myths here about corn not being able to provide any inches for whitetails. I think it actually is providing inches for whitetails. Didn't realize that until this analysis, but with those protein levels, this is 100% helping the deer herd. We all think of corn as more of a candy crop for whitetail, something that's not really benefiting the herd a significant amount, but it actually is. It's actually benefiting it more than what I realized. I want to state before I close this video, I am not somebody who has studied how to understand these results on this analysis, but I have spent many, 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 many hours on phone calls, through text messages with folks that are a lot smarter than I am trying to interpret this, diving into the data, trying to figure out what's important, what's really irrelevant in this. So we have already learned a significant amount from this study and I cannot wait to learn more and more and more as time goes on. So if you have not already hit the subscribe button, I would 100% encourage you to do that. So if you need help setting up your deer hunting farms, your food plots, your stand locations, your access, your screening, thing like that, you can go to my website www.diyfoodplotpro.com and you can click on boots on the ground visit i'll come to your farm this winter we will walk it and make a detailed plan that makes that property hunt better we will figure out what food plots grow best in your soil type and your environment and i will have a full recommendation of food plots and stand locations tsi and fsi and bedding cuts on that property. So if that's something that interests you, you can go to www.diyfoodplotpro.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Y'all smash that like and subscribe button.